In this video, we're going to be looking at a specific conic section called a parabola. Now, we've studied parabolas for some time. We've seen parabolas, you know, all the way back through our algebra classes and that sort of thing. So it's kind of peculiar to be studying parabolas again in a calculus class. But um, the way we're going to define them is a little bit different than what you're accustomed to. All right, so the, the main point of the at least the beginning of this video is we need to talk about what what is it that makes a parabola a parabola is it just being a u-shaped graph or is there anything special that needs to happen in order to make it be a parabola so let's let's talk about that what defines a parabola is actually two things you have a focus and you have something called a directrix the focus is a point and the directrix is a line the directrix can be a horizontal line or a vertical line, and you'll get different types of parabolas depending on what and where your focus and your directrix is. Now, what we're looking for are points that are the same distance away from the focus that they are the directrix. So, for example, an easy point uh, that's the same distance away is just halfway between them. So, if here's the focus and here's the directrix, Here's one point that's certainly the same distance away. We call this distance here P. So P is the distance between the focus and what becomes what's called the vertex of the parabola and the vertex to the directrix. These are the same distance away. But now notice, if you want to move away from the vertex, if, for instance, if you want to go this way, well then the distance between the focus and your point becomes longer, which means that the distance between the point and the directrix must also become longer. So when you leave, you can't go directly to the right. You also have to go up and away as well. So now these distances won't be P anymore. They're longer than P, but this distance here does match this distance here. And if you go even farther, this distance here will match this distance here. You'll have to bend upwards, and that's what makes a parabola. So here's the formal definition of a parabola. It's the set, the collection of all points that are equidistant. Equidistant is a fancy way of saying the same distance from the focus as it is the directrix. So a point like, let's say, right here, for example, that could not be on the parabola because the distance to the focus is a lot shorter than its long distance from the directrix. That's why he was not on the graph of the parabola. But uh, this guy, on the other hand, has the same distance to the focus that it does the directrix. So that's why he is on the parabola. And so we've seen here just a couple of examples. Look at the pink lines. That point, this point, and that point in particular, all of these are on the parabola. Same thing as on the other side. Okay, so that's our formal definition of a parabola. All right, now, how do you write the equation of a parabola, though? Well, that, again, depends on the vertex and the focus and the directrix. So let's say, for example, we had a vertex at the point HK. So this point right here, we're going to call that HK. Well, then notice the focus and the directrix actually depend on the distance away from the vertex that we're talking about. So let's call that distance P. So the focus would be the same X coordinate as the vertex, because notice you're not moving left and right for the focus, um, but the Y value for the focus is higher in my picture than the vertex. So it's K plus P, right? So you've altered the Y component. Now on the other hand, the directrix is a line and in this picture for when I say vertical parabola, what I mean is one that's up or down, not, not opens sideways, but opens up or opens downward. The directrix here is a line, so it's y equals a constant, being that it's a horizontal line, and the parabola bends away from the directrix. Now, the directrix has uh, almost the same y-coordinate as the vertex, but notice it's been lowered by p units. So the directrix is y equals k, k is in the k value for the vertex, minus p, whatever this distance here is here. Okay, and p is the directed distance from the vertex to the focus. Now, one thing I have to stress, one thing I have to emphasize, this p value right here could certainly be negative. 
because it's a directed distance. So if the p value was negative 2, you would actually have k plus 2. And the reason this uh, has to be the case is you can have uh, parabolas that are open downward instead of upwards. And so you would want the directrix to be above the vertex instead of below. So just keep that in mind as well. Now, I know all of this is theory. Notice there's no numbers on my page. Um, in the upcoming videos, we'll do a, a number of examples where we actually go through and write the equations of parabolas with real numbers so that I can better explain the k minus p and the k plus p and those sorts of things. So uh, don't, don't let that concern you. Okay, so if you know all these things, if you know the h, you know the k, you know the p, you know the focus and the directrix and the vertex and all these things, now, how do we write its equation? What, again, I, I haven't shown you yet what's the equation of the parabola. Well, it's this. It's x minus h squared equals 4py, where h is, ac actually, I'm missing a term here, should be y minus k. Sorry, I left that term off there. Sorry about that. It's x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k. So if you know the vertex hk, you let, let's say the vertex is at 2, 3, then you just take 2 for h and 3 for k and stick them in. And then if you can determine the distance to the focus from the vertex to the focus and get that p value, then you would take that number and stick it in. And so for example, if your vertex was at the origin, you could make a kind of a watered down version of this guy. It's roughly, I mean, there, again, there's some details that we would need to hash out, but roughly y equals x squared, right? Y equals x squared. It's a parabola that we all know very well. And so um, if it would open downwards and the p-value was negative, you would get y equals negative x squared, right? Because of the, the negative p-value there. So hopefully that convinces you that this is the generic formula for the equation of a parabola. Now, again, I've got to stress, this is only if it's up and down, only if it's vertical, opens upwards or downwards. Uh, we have to actually redo this if it opens uh, left or right. Okay, so in, in this case, the vertex is the same thing, hk, but notice the directrix this time, if your parabola opens, let's say, to the right, then your directrix would actually be vertical, it would actually be up or down. So it would be x equals h minus p as opposed to k minus p. And the focus, rather than shifting the y value like we did for the vertical parabola, we would shift the x coordinate, so it would be h plus p comma k. And then we'd have this parabola where here's the directrix, here's the focus, and this is the p value. There's the vertex. Right? Uh, its equation is similar, but obviously the, the variables have been switched around. If it opens left or right, it's y minus k squared equals 4px minus h. Okay, so uh, again, we'll go through plenty of examples where we actually write some of these here. I'm just kind of unpacking the theory about why it is what it is. Now, the last thing I'll close with is uh, just a few extra remarks. These are these will be real quick. Um, if you have a parabola, and let's say here's your focus, occasionally you might be asked for the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is just either a vertical line or a horizontal line, depending on how it opens, that um, is equally matched. The parabola is um, equally drawn on both sides, is symmetric about that vertical or horizontal line. This one happens to be a vertical axis of symmetry. So your uh, axis of symmetry will either be x equals a constant, and you, ac you actually even know what the constant will be. It's the x coordinate of the focus, right? Because if this guy has an x value of h, uh, the axis of symmetry would be x equals h, or if it was opening left or right, it would be y equals k would be the axis of symmetry. It'd be a horizontal axis of symmetry. All right, two other quick things. Um, occasionally you'd be asked about a focal chord. Uh, a chord is just any line segment that touches both sides of the parabola and a focal chord will be a chord that specifically goes through the focus. 
So you can have different focal cords, like all of these in fact would be focal cords. Now there's one focal cord in particular that we're often asked about. Uh, it's got a funny name, it's called the lattice rectum. Now this is a focal cord that's actually, you could say it one of two ways. You could either say parallel to the directrix, in other words, it's horizontal when the directrix is horizontal, or you could say that it's perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. Either way of saying that's fine. And uh, for the lattice rectum in particular, being that you know that this distance here is P, and this is on the uh, parabola, then this distance here is also P. And so the length of the lattice rectum is actually 2P. Right? It's actually 2P um, since it's perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. So anyways, there's just a, a couple little extra details there. Um, but the meat of this is the equations of the parabolas that we need to be familiar with. So anyway, hopefully that, that kind of lengthy video there um, helps you understand parabolas a little bit better. Uh, in the upcoming videos, we'll actually do some real examples where we start to work with these guys.